If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum leadership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I love Anchor because it's really easy to use, very accessible to record your podcast, and has excellent sound quality. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. I would like to announce that the eighth podcast Zoom chat with NBLD people from the audience will be on July 17th, and I'm switching it to Facebook instead of Zoom because with Facebook Messenger, you can do rooms and you can do video chats on there and you don't have to be concerned about the time limit which is easier than zoom because once you set a time limit you are kind of limited and sometimes they kick you out of the room so i am switching it to facebook so that doesn't happen um that way it's easier with the time limit on that and so Again, the eighth one will be on July 17th, and it will be at 10 a.m. Pacific time zone. And if you would like to attend it, please go to Living with NLD Facebook page and respond to the event on there for July 17th. And let me know that you are coming. That way I can um, send you the invite on that day. And I hope to uh, continue to see new people come to that uh, little group chat because I do enjoy creating a safe space for people with an OD to talk about things that they would like to discuss. And I am really enjoying learning more about NLD and being able to support people with it. And I've been enjoying doing that for, um, eight months now with this little group. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All right. Hello. So today's episode is about trying to style your hair, taking care of your body and receiving constructive feedback with an LD. But first I want to acknowledge something. Drum roll, please. I would like to take the time to celebrate today that I have been doing this podcast for one whole year. Does not feel like that. I started with just six plays 
for my first episode on July 17th of 2020. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you some statistics and I know this might sound boring to you at some point, but it's important to me because I've been able to see this podcast grow over time. So on July 17th, I had six plays of 2020. And then I started the website on September 18th, and it had eight views just from the U.S. And then on that same day, I started a Facebook and Instagram page for the podcast, and they both had 16 followers on the same platform. I mean, sorry, on both platforms. And then... On August 19th of 2020, the podcast went international by Canada joining the audience. Yay, Canada! (laughs) Within one week of the podcast being on Spotify, it had 39 plays and 9 listeners. In November of last year, it got to 1,000 plays across all episodes. In January of this year, I created the YouTube channel, which now, which in January had 13 13 subscribers on it. And now, one year later, I'm at, drum roll, (laughs) that's my drum roll, it's not very good, sorry. I'm at 3,176 plays across all episodes, which is 52 episodes. This is the 52nd most plays in one day is 65. I mean, are 65. And there are 146 listeners on Spotify and 58 followers on Facebook. There are 119 likes, 131 followers. On Instagram, 86 followers. On YouTube, we now have 22 subscribers and 496 views and 18 likes of the episodes. 45 people on the newsletter list. And for the geographic locations. We have 45 states, 41 countries, and 490 cities that I have counted worldwide. And we have 1,812 website views. And I'm saving this number for last because I calculated it myself. You can download my podcast episodes from Spotify. And I was able to calculate how many downloads in total I have because Anchor doesn't give this to you. They only give you the weekly downloads. So I calculated how many total downloads I have, which is 1,000 171 downloads across all episodes. So I've done 52 episodes with 974 views on the website. I've done 17 interviews and 36 solo episodes. I have also, I also have about 10 people on the Facebook chats that were on Zoom in the beginning. And those people are people who have NLD and that I spend time with each month and try to support them with their challenges and be a safe space for them to talk about those challenges. And I'm not sharing these statistics or analytics to brag. I'm sharing this out of pride because I didn't think 
my baby podcast would grow this quickly in one year. I couldn't have done this without my audience, you all. I don't know all of you, but thank you. And all the feet and thank you for all the feedback that I've gotten from you. And also thank you to everyone who wrote those articles that I've referenced in my podcasts, especially the ones that are personal. It has helped me provide another perspective to my podcast that I wouldn't have been able to do without them. And thank you to the NBLD project and this NLD life for helping me spread the world out about my podcast, especially when I don't ask you to help me out. That means even more to me when you do it that way. I love when I see you post about my podcast on your own because then I get to comment on it and thank you. Thank you to the NBLD project for the recognition you gave me with the care package you sent to me for being an NBLD advocate and helping you raise a total of $1,781 across two fundraisers. That package made me feel really special and like all the hard work was worth it. And it is still worth it. I still feel that each time I get feedback from my audience and wear one of the t-shirts you gave me. Thank you to everyone I've interviewed, the ones that are published on the podcast and will be soon. I haven't forgotten about you. I've done probably 20 interviews with neurotypicals and NBLDers. You also added more to the podcast with different perspectives and opinions. I've learned from you more than I thought I would before each interview started. Thank you to Zoom for making recording of the interviews easy to do. Also, thank you audience for making my website really popular on Google. It's on the first page and I created and designed that with the help of my brother and mom. Thank you to my family and friends supporting and helping me with doing this. They helped me record some of the episodes by being voices for some of the interviewees who were too nervous or anxious to have their voice on the podcast. They have also helped with researching topics. They have helped me know what equipment to use. Excuse me. They have helped keep my dog quiet while recording so there's not so much background noise. <laughs> Thank you to my families for supporting me in creating something that changed who I was before I started it because I got better at knowing what NLD is by researching it and I got better at researching it also and I got better at knowing myself as a result. I don't recognize who I was before I started this podcast. This has also, sorry, this has always been a challenge for me, especially. So let me back up. Now I'm starting today's episode, which is about styling hair. So styling my hair has always been a challenge for me because my hair is super thick and hasn't always been the same length. It's either been at my waist or a shorter length or bob cut. I liked having all those lengths, but the easiest one to style was the shorter because now that I figured out the hard way, I can just wash my hair and sleep with it wet and wake up with it being super curly. I got that gene from my dad. I did try to curl my hair with an iron, but it's hard because you have to figure out which way to curl the hair, whether it's towards or away from your hair, I mean, from your face. This is also true with your straightener. I think guys can relate to this because they probably have challenges with trying to figure out how to style their hair with gel or water, and whether they need to use a comb or fingers to style it. And if you have blonde hair, 
guys, you're probably maybe trying to curl it yourself or maybe you're not. I don't know. I'm not a guy. <laughs> Anyways, I can relate to this article from not bleh, from Yahoo News. Got tongue tied there. How Nonverbal Learning Disability Affects Me by Aline Herzog. Quote, for example, I can't wear makeup. I can't wear most dresses because of the tricky zippers. I can't tie my shoes tight, do my own hair other than to brush it, and so many other things because of the hand-eye coordination and spatial skills they require. Even taking a shower takes me a few extra minutes, and it takes me longer to turn it on or off to wash my hair and body due to my poor hand strength and hand-eye coordination, end quote. So I used to not be able to do more than just brush my hair and wash it, but I got better at taking care of myself because of my parents. My mom used to have long hair, so she could help me a lot, and my dad also used to have long hair, so he could help me too. They were both good at doing hairdos. <laughs> it also got easier if I looked at how other girls did their hair, as long as they had similar hair to mine. I have a lot of ways to get my hair off my neck now with just one item instead of many, which also makes it easier. One of the main reasons it's hard to style hair with NLD is because of the fine motor skills. You have to learn how much hair to put in the curling iron or straightener. Another reason it is difficult is because of a sense of direction that you may not have if you have NLD and having to know whether to, you turn the iron clockwise or counterclockwise in addition to where to put the hair on the iron. Does it go on the front or on the back of it? So I had a meltdown while trying to style my hair and it and to get it well done the day before, I mean the day of our family photos, which made part of that day worse. I was letting my mom style it but realizing I could never be as good as her because of NLD and all the challenges that come with it. That's when I realized I would have an easier time if I just slept with my hair wet than trying to curl it with an iron. This took some stress out of my life and made me happier because then I enjoyed my mornings more. One more challenge that comes with styling hair and taking care of it is the timing of it because you have to learn how often to do it and plan ahead, which can be tricky to do with an LD. I'm good at planning ahead because of being homeschooled and doing trips during times when they weren't always school breaks. I had to learn how to schedule ahead of time so I didn't fall behind on schoolwork. This also helped with timing because I learned when to do projects and prioritize them and try to do less important ones at other times. When trying to style and take care of your body, your hair or your body, you have to plan ahead so you know how it will, how long it will take, which means you have to wake up earlier. You also have to be willing to hear constructive feedback from people about it, which may be challenging to hear, especially if you don't always want to hear it. I've gotten better at receiving feedback because I had to deal with it and with NLD. Sometimes I know I haven't done well with receiving feedback because it's unexpected and too critical, which I usually take too sensitively. 
especially if it was about something I spent a long time trying to do well on. Like I remember knitting a bean for my dad and it came out too loose between the rows and st stitches. When I got feedback from my mom and it felt like re I felt like redoing the whole thing, which I had spent a whole month on. I knew it should have been tighter, but I didn't want to make it too tight because I remember how hard it was to pull off the previous stitches from the last beaning I had made, which was for myself. This article has a good strategy for constructive feedback. It is titled Nonverbal Learning Disorders by Sue Thompson and Brian Rurick. I think I'm saying that correctly. And the article is from Neuro Assessment and Development Center. Quote, do you tell this child everything and encourage her to give you verbal feedback? The most effective instructional procedures are those that associate verbal labels with concrete situations and experiences. I shouldn't have to tell you does not apply. Assume you do have to tell her. She cannot look and learn, end quote. I can relate to this quote because I do need verbal feedback because I'm such a verbal person and dependent on my words and you and the use of them that comes with being an NBLDR. I need you to tell me point blank how to improve. Otherwise, if you're not clear, I won't know how to move forward. And if you're using your body language or something other than words, it won't be as clear to me. I am good with feedback and emails or written format because then I can save it for future reference. I also frequently ask, asked about feedback with my work at previous jobs because I wanted to improve and show them that was true. My mom is very good at getting my feedback because she makes sure that I understand it and my improvement gets acknowledged, especially when I don't ask for it to be. When she does that means more to me because she knows how hard it is for me to work on specific projects for her because of NLB. And I think she appreciates the time I take to do them because it shows that I care about my work and want to do a good job on it. This correlates to taking care of yourself because you want to look nice and show that you love your body just the way it is, whether it's fat, short, tall, or skinny. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. I've learned that over the years of trying to love my body more too, which is not always an easy thing to do. So whether it's about trying to style your hair, take care of your body, or learn how to receive constructive feedback, I and others who have NLD still have challenges with these things today. And as I conclude this episode, I would like to hear from my audience about the challenges you experience in these areas from taking care of yourself, styling your hair, whether you're a guy or a girl, and receiving constructive feedback please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com with the answer or comment on the episode on livingwithnld.com with the answer. You can also go to YouTube and comment on the episode with the answer. Thank you for listening today, and I hope you learned something new about yourself. Talk to you next Friday. Bye. For now. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you, my audience. Please know that just because I have a podcast doesn't mean that I'm perfect in every way and don't make mistakes. I make them every day and try to learn from them. I hope that this podcast helps you feel included, not alone, inspired, safe, and encouraged to make your life a little easier for you every day or chance you have the opportunity to. I would like to hear from you especially if you have topics that you would like to know more about relating to NLB. 
I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. Also, please email me if you would want to be interviewed on this podcast or if you need support with something related to NLD. I'm always happy to help in any way I can. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will talk to you next Friday. Bye.